Hi everyone, this is Shannon Port from Art of the Feminine and I am a Divine Feminine Astrologer and Teacher of the Feminine Mysteries. And on this platform in Divine Feminine Astrology, we are working with the divine archetypes, the symbols, and the codes of the goddess. We say that we work with these archetypes in the resurrection of the body of Sophia. We also say that Divine Feminine Astrology is an astrology for the coming age of Sophia. And so I welcome you to this video. Today we are going to be doing an archetypal activation for the Virgo new moon. And so if you haven't seen the last video on the age of Sophia, you can find it on the channel in the Esoteric Feminine Codes and make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're going to be, I'll be uploading shorter astrology videos now to the channel and that way you'll get notified when I upload. This is a new format because we've mostly been doing Q&As and live streams and so make sure to subscribe. These are going to be really, really deep videos but compact so they're easy to digest. Um, all right, we call this wisdom the Sophionic Codes of Sound and Light. We work in Divine Feminine Astrology, we work with the cosmic waves of the planetary bodies and their beneficial forces to activate what we call the light body prism. And so in beautiful timing, a Virgo is the sign that we give to the light body prism. And last year, we did a Virgo new moon video and I might link it underneath. We did, in fact, we did a Virgo new moon video where we worked with prayer and we'll be talking about prayer today in the video. I also want to say for any information in working with me I will always have links under the video in the description box. And you can also visit artofthefeminine.com because we have, as a lot of you already know, I run a one-year school and it's that time of year again that we're enrolling for fall. So you can find the links underneath. And let's dig in to the Virgo new moon. So the Virgo new moon, wait, let me tell you how we'll do these videos because it's a little bit different format. So what I will do first is I will give you an introduction to the archetype that we're working and to the event that we're working with. The new moons are going to be activations. So every new moon that we do is an archetypal activation of that sign. And then when the video is a full moon, we'll be doing initiations. So the new moon is a time to activate the archetype within you and to really call forth the gifts and the codes of that sign. And then the full moon is more about birth and initiation and coming into the culmination of the lesson of that sign. So I just wanted to clarify that for the videos. Um, what these activations, archetypal activations are, they're to activate the collective consciousness. And so that is the mission of Divine Feminine Astrology. We're working for the upgrades and the healing that comes specifically with this event. So, and, and so this work is meant to deepen your heart to the wisdom of Sophia. And we say this is the wisdom of the coming goddess epoch. All right. This is the order we will do the videos. First, I will introduce the archetype. And then I'll do the archetypal activation, which will be some writing. And then we'll close with a prayer. Or actually, after I introduce the archetype, we'll do the transits. So we're going to do the transits pretty close to the beginning. So then we can move after we cover what's actually happening. Astrology governs 3D. So on any given day, when you look at the planetary transits, you're looking at what already is. You're looking what has been created in the unseen world 
to manifest in form in the seen world. That's what astrology is. So when we're born under a birth chart, we come in and that chart shows us what we're carrying. It's already predetermined. It's, it's just so powerful. But we also have the power to rewrite that destiny. And so the way we work is to rewrite those codes, to heal those codes, to activate the gifts of those codes, and to just know more about the person that we are, why we're here, and what where we are at in the spectrum of our entire existence as a soul and spirit. So let's introduce Virgo. Virgo is a feminine sign. Every sign is either masculine or feminine. We start with Aries as masculine. Then we move into Taurus, feminine. Gemini, masculine. Cancer, feminine. Leo, masculine. And Virgo, feminine. Virgo is the sixth house. So six is a correspondence for Virgo. Virgo is a mutable sign. And so there's, there's energy of change and alchemy in Virgo. Virgo is opposite Pisces. It's on the 612 axis. So on the wheel, Virgo and Pisces are opposite each other. And that's a big deal. Virgo and I have a lot of Virgo and Pisces. And so Virgo and Pisces represent the, the Piscean age. It, they represent the Virgin and the Christ and so we really have to, we're, we're meant to assimilate, which is a very Virgo quality before we move into the age of Aquarius and to really grasp what Virgo is. Virgo is the virgin and she's, she's divine. She's the divine mother, the Mary Sophia. Virgo is ruled by Mercury. So Virgo is an alchemical sign of the mind the higher mind. Virgo corresponds to the hermit in the tarot. And we'll be working with the hermit because that's what we do here. We work with what we call the divine archetypes very deeply. It's tarot key nine. So nine is another correspondence for Virgo. It is the 20th path on the tree of life. And it is the, the path from Jupiter to the sun. So those are, that's the, those are the Sephiroth that are connected by Virgo. It's the path of Chesad to Tiferet, or the path between Jupiter and the sun, which is a deeply auspicious combination when you put Jupiter with the sun. It is the sign of digestion, of thinking, of discernment, of purification, alchemy, union, adeptship, prophecy. It is the magician of the voice, the awakened voice of the Christ force. And so it represents the awakening of the logos in matter. It represents the mind and the will of the mind, the higher mind. And that's why it has this power for, for um, assimilation and digestion, which are really, really, we, we were, we'll be talking on the esoteric wisdom with that. It is the Hebrew letter Yod. And Yod represents the hand. It me, it's the hand of creation. And it ha, it's occult significance and mystical symbolism are deeply fire yod is that represents the tongues so when you when you hear speaking in tongues that is the esoteric meaning of working with the primordial fire that works through virgo the hebrew letter is yod as in yod he vav he yod is the tongues of fire and so it's the creative hand of, of God. And so this is, this is very deep. All right, I'm going to say some keywords of Virgo. Um, and then we'll go into the transits that are happening on the planet. Virgo keywords. 
Virgin Sophia, discernment in speech, purification, organization, discernment, very precise and specific wisdom. That word is very important. We work with the wisdom of Sophia. This is the whole, what Art of the Feminine Platform was founded on. My original website said the wisdom of Sophia, a living transmission of the divine word. And that is what this is. Very specific speech. Light body prism, the regenerated astral body, adept ship and prophecy, mind, mercury and alchemy, the virgins of light. We also have prayer, union, and we've said these, the Virgin Mary, Mother Mary, birth of the sun. Logos is speech. So Virgo represents, Virgo represents response. It's the response. And in key nine, the hermit is also the response. It's we're under um, forces that work upon us spiritual forces. Some are of the shadow nature and the nature of evil and corruption. Sometimes we say the corrupted matter. And we also have access to the higher heavenly forces of the queen of heaven, of the virgin Sophia. This is what Virgo is about. And so a Virgo is response because Virgo represents how we use our mind to work with those forces. An untrained, unintuitive mind is at the mercy of the forces. And we say it's flung around the wheel. The untrained mind remains on the periphery. Um, the, you know, certain lineages would say on the wheel of samskara and is kind of helpless to the karma of their, of their natal chart because the natal chart holds the karma. It holds the fate. And so when we work with this wisdom, we're moving into the destiny. We're able to work with the wisdom and the codes and symbols and archetypes to have a co-creative way to ascend. Ascend is another word for Virgo. When you think of the hermit, you think of the, the ascended master standing on the mountaintop holding the lamp and that lamp represents the star of David which we talk about coming up I can't wait to, to, to speak to this by the way I didn't plan today to do writing but when I sat down just to organize to do this video and I want to keep it at 20 minutes and we're so I'm going to move it right along I my whole body was on fire with writing so this this the goddess wants to do these these videos very intentionally. I haven't had that happen in a while where I looked in the mirror and I was red and I felt hot and it was just the amount of energy coming in. So we must train our mind and this is Virgo to be disciplined, to understand how to eat, how to speak and how to digest the forces, so that we can separate the wheat from the chaff. This is the process. This is the process of ascension. We are, that's why Virgo is digestion. It's like she teaches us how to train our mind and access the higher mind so that we can use what builds our body of light, which is light body woman is based on this wisdom in a very real way. So, all right, I think I'm ready for the transits. Um, okay, we must train our mind to be attuned to the queen of heaven, not to the lower serpent force of temptation into evil, which is part of the Our Father. Forgive us our trespasses and lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. This is, we talk about those prayers. Those prayers, whether you're religious, whether you're Christian, makes no difference. They are truly, truly loaded spiritual, dare I say, weapons to activate you at this time. Um, into evil, which is a response. That is the response Okay, so when we enter into evil, what this means, it's not superstitious and it's not even judgmental. That is when we desecrate the body, the virgin body of Sophia. We destroy our astral body. That's what we've done here in this world. And that's what when on the Virgo Pisces axis, we're working with Virgo and Pisces. Pisces holds that deep, deep, darker shadow energy that we are regenerating it's a process of de regeneration to regenerate the fallen astral body. Um, all right. The hermit teaches us the path of Virgo and divine digestion of the heavenly forces. All right. So let's know we're going to shift gears now. We'll just take a moment. We'll go into the, um, so we're, we're going to go into the transits happening on the planet. So the sun and moon at this new moon are at 11 degrees Virgo. Opposite Saturn, Saturn's in Pisces at retrograde at 16 degrees. So that is a, I think it's about a five degree orb, but this new moon is opposite. Um, it's opposite Saturn, which is significant. Uranus will have just stationed retrograde at 27 degrees Taurus on this new moon. Now the new moon also is on the 2nd and 3rd of September. 2 and 3 represent the high priestess and the empress. So you can already feel there is deeply feminine energy in and it's already Virgo, a feminine sign. It's on the 2nd and 3rd and it is and Uranus will have just stationed retrograde at 27 degrees Taurus. Now, Uranus is something we've been working with for the past several years. This retrograde in Taurus is, it's going to, adjust. We've, we just had the, the Mars-Uranus Algol conjunction, and we did the, the video called Lilith and the Demon Star for that, for the Capricorn um, moon. And now that energy has been lit. I know because I have a grand cross in the fixed signs, <laughs> which, and it was right on my grand cross. That this the energy at twenty seven degrees is so intense right now, and with the station of retrograde, it's going to dig in deep. That's happening at the new moon, and we'll we're, that has to do with all the changes that are happening on the planet. We'll be talking more about that. Um. Mercury is newly direct, and this is a really, this is really good. Mercury is in Leo at 23 degrees, will be, will be newly direct. And this past Mercury retrograde, I just want to tell you, if you don't believe in astrology, I have, I, I, when you look at Mercury retrograde, I've studied this scientifically over many, many years. The things that happen in Mercury retrograde are so consistently aligned with you know, the miscommunications and mix-ups in transportation, communication, technology, purchases, contracts, our words, how we process, that it, it, every time I think, well, I know it's coming, but it still blows me away. I just want to say that because it's just validation why we, when we're ready, attune ourselves to the planetary forces. And I plan to also talk about idols, because there's a lot of religious activity on the planet right now kind of condemning the idols. I would definitely have be speaking to that as someone who has come from a deeply spiritual and religious, um, you know, traditional organized religion background, but has also been in this wisdom for since I was a child. I'm, and so I have a lot to say about that and we'll continue to speak on that. All right. So Mercury is direct. And it's square Uranus. So Mercury's getting ready to go direct and it's going to square. It's, it's, it is direct. It will be square to Uranus as it moves to that 27 degree mark and just before and just after. That's significant. After a Mercury retrograde, now squaring Uranus retrograde, that will bring some. And remember, Mercury rules Virgo. It also rules Gemini. 
that will bring some mind activity and and perhaps even with the momentum of mercury in in its forward motion will bring some information forward so capricorn also will be at 29 degrees of um or i'm sorry pluto will, is at 20 will be at 29 degrees of capricorn we've talked so much about pluto and capricorn but just know this as we enter the age of aquarius pluto mm-hmm again, is at the last degree of cap will be at 29 degrees of Capricorn. And it's, it's having its last moment in Capricorn, understanding Capricorn rules, religious institutions, it rules the banks, it rules, um, it rules structures, it rules the patriarchy, and, and so much more that we've already spoken to just in depth. Today, I'll just say to watch out for that because Capricorn, Pluto is entering into Aquarius, and we've been working a lot with the archetype of Pluto, the archetype of Hades, the archetype of death and regeneration will be huge. Relationships will be huge. All eighth house themes, which is what this work is built upon at Art of the Feminine. For those of you who've seen the esoteric feminine codes know I I speak to that a lot. Um, That's healing love healing the dragon current, which is the sexual force, healing power, healing wisdom, you know, healing just how we in this world learn to navigate power that is enforced upon us and also the power that we show up and embody. So it's it's going to be asking us, This is a time of initiation with Pluto moving into uh, the age into Aquarius because, and Uranus rules Aquarius and there's retrograde in Taurus, sign of our planet. That fire of, of the underworld, that fire of death and regeneration of the goddess will be on for many, many years after Pluto enters back into Aquarius. So just be aware of that. You might also look what sign you have Aquarius in because it's it will tell you a lot. Okay. All right. We have a lunar eclipse coming up. Okay, that's it. I think I'm going to leave it at that for the transits because I have a writing and I want to get into it. I'm going to try to try to keep this now. I'll try to move right along so this uploaded video isn't too long. So Virgo is the archetype. I'm now in the archetypal activation for Virgo. So welcome again to the Goddess Report, to our Divine Archetype podcast. And may you now just shift for a moment and know that this writing is meant for you to begin to digest how perfect for Virgo the sophionic codes of sound and light the cosmic waves that want to find you as the prism, the light body prism. That's the activation of your of your superior astral force, the superior astral body, which is the mediator between the worlds and the balanced energy of the masculine and feminine. Virgo is the archetype of the hermit, the master on the mountaintop, holding the lamp of wisdom. The hermit's wisdom is the illumined mind, Mercury. In mysticism, mind is matter. Mind is matter. There is no separation. Our thoughts, our words are the house that we live in, quite literally, The hermit is the archetype of the higher self that is known only when we turn inward to organize our consciousness of Virgo, that organization, its work. When we come into spiritual maturity, we realize that life is beautiful and we're intuitive. But once we begin to hear that call, the call of the masters, we, they, 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 allow our karma to really hit us until we're suffering. And then we kind of get that, that thunderbolt of, oh, there's something deeper than just materialism. Then we start to discern the material world and the elemental forces. 
Virgos are the are the best. I've worked with in my work a lot of Virgos, and I also have a lot of Virgos. Virgo is my south node, so I have a pretty deep relationship to it. And um, they just see how things are going to be organized. They think ahead. They're very pristine about how they present. It's a, it's it's an analytical kind of mind, even though it's a feminine sign. Um, and they listen. When you speak, they digest what you say and they're critical of it. Vir uh, always ask a Virgo for good feedback. If you want, if you need healthy criticism, show them and they will not hesitate and they will tune in and give you, you know, an awakened Virgo will give you good advice. In fact, I think Virgos make the best consultants and analysts because literally it's just such a deep gift. Okay. Virgo is the virgin also connected to the high priestess as the moon. Here, she represents the pristine waters of our subconscious mind, the dark and unseen hidden conscious that's very fertile and that works through the law of suggestion. So we talked all about in the last video, the age of Sophia, the last video on this channel, we talked about the law of suggestion. And with, with this high priestess energy, she will create what she is told to create. We have to really understand how to work with her. Hence, Mercury. Mercury is our mind. Mercury is our will. Mercury is our focus. Here, she represents the pristine waters of our subconscious mind th that are fertilized by our conscious mind. The hermit holds the lantern in some decks. You will see it as the esoteric symbol of the Star of David. And so, the alchemical marriage of the masculine and feminine principle, Mercury is the planet of conscious mind and the magician archetype. We must use the power of Mercury, who is also the divine ruler of Virgo for the great work of inner union. This is how we stabilize our vehicle and how we begin the work of separating the wheat from the chaff, the work of Virgo. This is how we activate the Virgin Sophia in our own arc field to purify the astral body. So we say in light body woman, by the way, in the, in the one year school that I teach, which is linked under the video in the description box or at artofthefeminine.com, we, the, the whole teachings in light body yoga are, are genuine, genuine science and art of a female initiation and in healing and regenerating the astral body. That is the work. I often joke that my son was born right on top of Algol, which is Lilith. And I also have Lilith in a pretty, um, I have my Lilith is also in cancer in an exact square with Chiron. And so the Lilith wound has been a wound that I carried into this lifetime to specifically do this work. And that's where light body yoga comes from. So Virgo is directly opposite Pisces, as we just said. This is the axis of the 6th and 12th house, houses. Pisces holds the dark moon of Lilith in her belly as the fallen feminine force. Mercury, as the Christ force, goes into the underbelly of Neptune to regenerate the fallen feminine and bring her to her true spiritual form. Mind is matter. We call this building the body of Sophia or the wisdom body of the coming goddess epoch. We must be baptized in the solar force as the Holy Spirit. We must be capable of digesting her currents, her spiritual forces only the Virgin Sophia can awaken the feminine Christ force. We'll talk more about Lilith in the coming. We're doing a Lilith series. Make sure to subscribe. 
this I Lilith is so big that I have to I had to break it up into about five or six videos and there's my next video will be Lilith and they will be uploaded so look out for that series it must be said that n with no uncertainty that the world will not give you this this is huge so I want to say it again the world will not give you this no politician will give you this even your religion won't hand it to you you can be devout and you can really go into the essence and find it and if that's why you're there you will find it but nobody will hand you this wisdom Everything in our world is distraction. It's time in this archetypal activation to bring in Virgo as the key of discernment of the forces of nature, to pick out what you want to make part of your permanent body. We say the immortal body or what you would like to bring in, you know, to be represent you truly. Everything in this candy land is just pleasure. We talked about pleasure. There's nothing wrong with the world, but in our age of hyper distraction on social media, in our age of huge discord in politics, which we'll be speaking to as well, there is a lot of deception and manipulation. When your Virgo mind is attuned, you will you will see through any and all, let's say, propaganda. Your, your eyes will be linked to your heart. Your thoughts will be linked to your higher self. You will be oftentimes more quiet than you speak because you'll realize the hermit turns inward. He's on the icy mountaintop alone. This is the archetype of meditation. And it means that you will not, you have to go in and claim it. That's why we teach the prayer. I can't wait to talk about it. I'm gonna, I have a couple more things to do and then I'll, 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 I'm gonna close out. So that's why prayer is sacred union. When we pray, our conscious mind dips into our heart and activates our subconscious mind, our high priestess. And then we allow the divine impulses of Virgin Sophia to work upon us to build that new body. This is the, what we do in Divine Feminine Astrology. This has been a deeply developed download of these archetypes specifically for this reason, for the age of Sophia and for the goddess Epoch. So listen to them. Each archetype is a book of wisdom, as we always say. We, I've been teaching the archetypes for the past 15 years. Each one is a book. Virgo will tell you, go onto the icy mountaintop alone and look inward until your lamp has been lit. We'll talk more about, okay, the long way. Okay, it must be said with no uncertainty, and we did that. You must discern and purify your focus of attention. And so I'm just checking out this camera because it's different, making sure. This is my Virgo, by the way. It feels like it's, it's shifted a little bit. So I hope that's not the case. All right. This you must purify your focus and your attention as the work of, of Mercury to activate the divine word. The result of this is the birth, the Virgin gives birth to the Logos, to divine speech. Please check out Mars and the Mother Mary Mysteries. I, it's about a three hour lecture in the Esoteric Feminine Codes. It's all time stamped where I share an abundance of wisdom that comes from the Light Body Woman trainings and platform. It's the wisdom we've received 
for what we call the regeneration of the fallen Mars force, which is the divine Shakti body, the divine word of Mother Mary. The purifier of the virgin waters who gives birth to the astral body and the logo. So Mercury is that energy. Deep devotional prayer is the key to activation of the archetype of Virgo. Last year in the Virgo no moon, we worked with the Our Father and the Hail Mary to activate the divine masculine, Our Father, with the divine feminine, Hail Mary. This is the true meaning of these two prayers. I know there's a lot happening with religion and religion's a huge turnoff. And believe me, I will be speaking to some of the things that are coming out right now. It's why I've spent the past two years deeply studying the, mysteri the magisterium, the catechism and the canon of the religion that I was born into to, to be to be very precise in how I can speak to it because I'm not just speaking in generalizations or in conspiracies, but truly understanding as someone who's been raised and educated in this work, how this work is meant to inform that in the coming age of the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother. So, what made us go into that direction? Oh, be with religion, to not be turned out. They, these are mantras. In the, the, the master, Christ Jesus, gave the Our Father. And I have a book of the esoteric Our Fathers. Uh, maybe I'll post some on Instagram at Art of the Feminine, but some in Aramaic. The, the, this Our Father, if you say it, you can change your life instantly. Hail Mary as well. I've, I've already spoken to it in last year's New Moon video. I might link it below if you want to go through. I We speak it in that video in the Virgo New Moon from 2023. And we go through the prayer. So I'll look it up and link it under the video as well. So many people have told me, by the way, that that video shifted the, them hugely. People have told me, many have told me that they were embarrassed about feelings of being religious at this time, embarrassed many people of the word Christ. If, if you are, that's fine. There's no judgment in that at all. But when the path of the initiate, you, you hear language, you discern it and digest it from another aspect of who you are, that aspect that remembers the feminine mysteries, the feminine mysteries, which are, which are what we are revealing here in the divine feminine astrology archetypal activations. So, okay, we activate the divine feminine and divine masculine as the star of David. So star of David, upward triangle, our father, downward facing triangle, Hail Mary, upward triangle, the masculine principle, upward triangle, the feminine. These also represent, they represent in the Christos mysteries, the bread and the wine of the mass, the bread and the wine. And in the Magdalene mysteries, which is the one in the esoteric feminine codes playlist, we talk a lot about the blood of Holy Magdalene, which is the Hail Mary, and the solar the solarization of her blood, which is the divine feminine alchemy of the sacred union of Christ Sophia. All right, I'm going to move along here. We've got just a little bit left. Okay, so to work with these, okay, so the Star of David. So just letting you know, the reason this is so potent for Virgo and this archetypal activation for Virgo is that the hermit is the star of David. That's the lamp. The lamp, of the, he holds it on the mountaintop, the lantern, and it symbolizes that that code will take you to that alchemy, that inner union. And that the path to that is prayer, 
devotion and meditation to discern and to think before we speak. To understand that our words are the creative power of the Mars force. And unless we honor that, we will never we, we we can't even we we can't even begin to approach the path of the initiate or initiation that's that's these are the early mysteries meaning you know they're they're said to be the outer mysteries and the inner mysteries understanding how to get our life in order this is this is 101 we have to do that before we can even begin now as we progress we do fall back it happens a lot but our in tension, our will of Mercury is focused. Almost as soon as we fall, we're right back in it. This is the power and the discrimination of Virgo, meaning to discriminate and separate the wheat from the shaft, to know what is what. And that, that is represented in the Star of David. Okay, so when, so these prayers, when we pray like that, when we, so I, I've talked a lot in the past couple of years, how it's such a great story, how I was called back to pray the rosary. And I have my rosary with me, my rose quartz rosary at all times because of the, the kind of meditation I'm working with right now. It is truly sacred union to activate the word, to activate the ankh of Sophia, and to activate the blood of Christ Sophia as the solarization of the blood of Magdalene. Who will be talking more about in the next video? In fact, oh, I can't wait for the next video. I can't wait for it. So, all right, it, that's at the Pisces eclipse. So, oh my gosh, I'm so excited for that video. All right. So what happens when we when we do this? And just to let you know, when you go when you commit to that practice, it's got to be a commitment. The luminous beings and I will I say the divine feminine masters because in because in this work and with my lineage through Sophie Sophia and the divine mother and the activations and initiations I've taken, I work with the, the feminine ascended masters and who we often refer to as the Magdalene Magi. And they are able to work with you when you are in that state of inner union. That's when your world will change. So every single thing in the world right now is designed to give you a thousand reasons why you cannot do that. And these are the times that we live in. And I don't want to condemn them because they're actually really potent. When the forces are pressing us, the, the ability for alchemy is that much greater. So just know that when, um, when the forces are acting upon us and when things are squeezing us the greatest and when things are the greatest pressure and the greatest what we think everything's falling apart, that's when people, that's when people give birth to their soul. I, yeah, I just thought of something back in Soviet Russia. There are some poets that I used to read when I was in college, and there's some artists and spiritual initiates that came out of this era where the, um, where that, in that era, it tried to kill the Christ impulse. The goal of that in that revolution that led to that form of governance was to absolutely desecrate and destroy the Christic impulse, which is always the, the, it's always the goal of the shadow forces to kill out the spiritual impulse. But those people whose candle is already lit, has been lit, that lantern of Virgo, use it. That's when some of the greatest mystics were born and some of the greatest poetry as well. This is some poetry that really inspired me when I was an actress because it, it was so deep. If I wanted to prepare for a role, I'd read the poem and it would just take me in 
that's how it was so spiritual. It was the spiritualized feminine force. All right. So yes, we call upon the, ange the angelic hierarchies to work upon and to work in our astral body. So it's like they descend as the Holy Spirit from the divine plane and enter into our heart to begin to reorganize and repattern our field so that we're able to really, to build our body of light. Okay. The Holy Spirit is the ruler of the goddess epoch. The Holy Spirit, the aspect of the divine mother or the divine feminine, that is that primordial fire. And so this, it's the age of the Holy Spirit in the Sophianic age, the age of Sophia that we spoke of in the last video. And by the way, 888, which is when the video fell, 888 is a code of the solar force, or we could even say the solar Christ force. So that last activation at Lionsgate, it was so big for the planet. It was, it was big for the times we're living in. 888 is a mystical number. All right. Okay, the mountain we must climb. So the hermit kind of represents the mountain that we have to climb. We have to mount that. We have to climb the mountain of initiation. To even it's not till we get there that we can that the masters can find us. That's why the 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 pinnacle of the mountain is where the hermit stands. It's the mountain of um overcoming addiction to materialism, the seduction of the material world. It's where we begin to say the world mind is matter. And yet there are certain aspects of the lower mind that I'm now ready to, ex to move out and some that I'm ready to extract through the process of digestion to add to the building of my light body prism. The priest, the priests and the priestesses must receive the Sophionic wisdom. The priests in the patriarchal religions, the organized religions will have to, to carry on and to continue to hold the mysteries. And I, I believe that many will because it, this, it's going, going to become so obvious what has been missing. However, we spoke last time, it's really the divine, it's, it's the, you know, oh my God, it's the, fe it's the female adepts that will be leading the way because of a certain correspondence that we carry in our heart and for birth. And it will be, a, a bit challenging, and this isn't feminism, but it is spiritual regeneration of the feminine principle. Let me see if I meant to go very deeply into this. Just one moment. So we don't believe in tearing down here. Once you enter the path of initiate, you, you're not about tearing down. The wisdom kicks in and you know better. There, it's no longer a war, although there is a spiritual battle between these forces happening. You're very aware of that. But your discernment is like a sword that just sh sh cuts it away. And even I, I wrote a post on Art of the Feminine a long time ago. I'm going to look about uh, look it up and see. It was way back, maybe 2012 or 13, about the power of the female to defeat the devil in this era and how the woman can discern now just to sit, just to be clear that a man, a man in a female, in a male form when you're in your this just popped in so i'm going to say it when you're in your spiritual frequency when you go into your divine feminine frequency you act also as the feminine and so the the male vehicles also have access to that when they're spiritualized so that's the key. Spiritual teachers, spiritual practitioners, when you're in that practice, you become the woman. You become your inner woman takes over. 
And so I, somebody on the last video talked about that. Someone who's kind of followed my work for a while in a male body uh, had a beautiful comment about that. But I want to make sure you know that for the men who watch these videos, when you're in, it doesn't mean you can't be strong, but when you go into your wisdom, you, you can act, at, you can receive as the feminine receives. All right. Let me see if I want to say anything else about the church. So I'll be talking more about it. There, what I'll say, and I'll just, and then I'll begin to close. There is a push right now, and it's related to politics. No politician can give you the wisdom. So you can like a politician. You can even say, hey, you can favor one. Some some people that are on the path may look to, I'm thinking in the U.S., we have, you know, we have the right and left in our political parties. And it's important to know that no politician will give you your spirituality. They may give you certain agendas on the physical world. They may help the, the planet or the, the country in a way that you're rooting for, but they cannot even begin to touch your own spiritual work. That's up to you. So if you're spending a lot of time indulging in that, and especially the lower nature of these these kinds of battles that take place between the forces, try to reconcile and make peace with it and then go in as the hermit does and meditate. You're much better off spending your time that way. You will have the vision of discernment. And I'm telling you, it will be needed in these times because there's a lot of trickery happening right now. There's a lot of collaboration with religious forces and political forces for certain outcomes. And the problem is, is that it, it's, it's, it's a mixed bag because on one hand, more and more people want to become spiritual. More and more people want to be part of a religion because we're seeking community. We're seeking an organized process where we can celebrate, study, be devoted, listen to music, experience rituals, experience sacraments. That is all very, very heightened and very sacred. So any place you can find yourself into where you yourself are acting that way is divine. At the same time, there are parts of all of these bodies, the old parts, the hidden parts that were more patriarchal. And right now there's a lot of speaking out against the lineages that we come from. I will speak to that more in the Lilith videos. There's a lot of name calling and there's a lot of calling heretic. There's a lot of talking about idols. There's a lot of talking about, you know, those evil Gnostics. You could even say Masons or, you know, even the Rosicrucians. Now, not there's all kinds of crazy streams that have come through all of them, Gnostics, Masons, and Rosicrucians, but the true lineages are what we are speaking of here. The ones that genuinely have been the preparatory work of the divine feminine wisdom. There's still a rejection because of what happened as, what is it called? The Council of Nicaea. And so in 300, in, in the 300s AD, there was a formalization of the body of the canon for the church to unify. And at that time, a lot had to be spliced out in order to make it a coherent body that could be unified. And there's nothing wrong with unifying. It was actually, it was good and bad because it was good because it gave the, the body of, of, of the teachings in the Christ and the Virgin Mary a platform to spread. But there's also pockets of it that were really keeping hidden this next path that's coming in. And let me just see if there's anything else I meant to say. Some people out of stubbornness, some people out of fear that not wanting to lose power, and some people out of discernment for not wanting to promote something that people are not ready to digest. It's very true that the higher wisdom isn't for the masses. These are the inner teachings or the, or the esoteric that require 
real preparation. An exoteric religion is that preparation. And then there's many people who also spontaneously awaken because they take it so seriously. Some of the female saints, especially, and sages. Um, I'm going to leave that there and we'll continue to speak to this. So, all right. We talked about the tongues of fire as the living Christ force in matter. Mind is matter. Speaking in tongues in the in religion and in the Christianity, speaking in tongues is speaking of the whole as the Holy Spirit. It's speaking the language of the goddess, which here we call the divine feminine wisdom. Wisdom governs form. We work with specifically divine feminine astrology is built on archetypal activations, symbols, and codes to resurrect the body of Sophia or the body of Christ Sophia. It's to give our form a higher frequency. Mind is form. So some of these streams of wisdom, some of the Gnostic streams, the Hermetic wisdom were lost and even hidden. And some were even huge amounts were burned at the Library of Alexandria. The truth of the soul and spirit was lost to those who didn't have the desire or the intention to find it. And it was replaced with a kind of um, worship of politics, worship of the state, worship of a lower law. We need lower law. We need to have laws to govern our world. But remember, politics always is addressing, for the most part, lower law. The laws of, of the 3D world, of time and space and of the zodiac. The, this law is meant to merge with higher law or the divine laws of nature. And that's when we will see a combustion, an awakening to the divine wisdom. Something else I want to say is that wisdom isn't showy. The truth is that the one who carries truth is silent. The one who knows is silent. There's no need to receive outer validation and there's definitely an understanding of where the water belongs what earth you're meant to water and what earth is not ready that was a code in the ancient mystery schools not to speak the higher wisdom because it can absolutely when wisdom hits an ego it activates what we here call lust frequency, which destroys the goddess via. It destroys the vital body, the subtle forces. When wisdom is received prematurely or given, and the vehicle doesn't have the maturity to digest it, what it does with it is it desecrates it and it uses it in a way that's deformed or degenerated. And then that's how we create the horror of Babylon, that archetype we talked about last time with degenerated, half-baked wisdom. And so let me just see as we close out on that what we want to. Wisdom also is the eighth house. The arcane wisdom is Scorpio. And in the last video we talked about, we talked about the eighth house. I have a correspondence that just popped in. The eighth house of Scorpio and the underbelly of Hades, ruled by Pluto, is now entering Aquarius for the age of Aquarius. Again, the eighth house. And then we talked about in Anthroposophy, there is the eighth sphere, which is the sphere that has separated. And the way I, I, the way I process it is that it's the capture of the feminine force to create the inorganic world. It's the hyper technological world that has no soul. It needs the feminine force, but it doesn't seek the soul and spirit. It's certainly, if it gets the wisdom, it's only to profane that wisdom. And so we're going pretty deep in this today, but I feel like for this Virgo archetypal activation we're meant to, 
Let me just see. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, this was the other correspondence to Virgo that I just saw. So on the tree of life, the sphere of Hod is the sphere of Mercury. And it's the eighth sphere. This is really deep for those who have ears to hear. Mercury, and we, we work, there's some other things that want to come in, but I'll save them for another time. We work with Let's see. Mercury governs Virgo. And so the eighth sphere that is the, um, it's the inverted sphere of Mercury and the mind of Virgo. So it's the Virgin Sophia or the Divine Mother inverted. We talk about the inversion of the feminine mysteries. This is coming more when we enter into this next series that we'll be doing. So what should be said about that is how important it is for you to discern what you take into your mind, what you discern, what you take into your subconscious mind. Remember the high priestess needs the power of the magician to direct the mind and the will and the focus so that what is birthed is linked to the higher forces. There's a saying, we want to find the light, but once we find the light, we have to attach the darkness to it. This right here is the key of the Star of David, meaning this is the work. This I will have this be our introduction to Lilith because Lilith is where we work with this. The next video I upload will be the first series in the Lilith series, the Lilith Mysteries. And um, make sure to subscribe so that you get the notification when I upload that. Instead of a live stream, I'll be doing it as an upload. That is the mystery of purifying the astral body. So your, oh, and also making your sound current pristine. Let me see if there's any last thing. All right. We talked a little bit about idols. We'll be talking more about idols. I had a request if I would make a video about idols because a lot of people, a lot of people are getting baptized right now. I know people who have been atheists their whole life who are literally going to religion and getting baptized. It's, it's, it, in part, it's very positive because many people are waking up. They want, they want to join with with a Christic force and that can be a really good thing and it's it's very powerful um but then there's also the the more um the younger understanding that's aligned with a lot of the teachings that that is condemning everything and um we'll be speaking to that we already have really because the archetypes that we work with here are those idols all right I think that's it Let's close with, we'll do I am in the seven directions and then I'll close on that. Exactly 13. I love it. All right. So what you need to know it right now is that the star of David is the solar Venus prayer. When we say I am in the seven directions, I've said this millions of times, thousands, we are activating the star of David in our field. This is the alchemical symbol, the archetypal activation of Virgo. So we will do I am in the seven directions before we close. That is the merging of the fire triangle of the Our Father and the water triangle of the Hail Mary. The merging of the masculine and feminine, the Christ and Sophia is in this solar Venus prayer. The solar Venus represents the solarization of the blood of Magdalene, the purification of the astral body. And so just repeating after me, I'm doing diamond mudra in front of my heart. I ask you to connect with your inner sun, that light, the light of the inner teacher, your inner Christ force, the being of your true identity. And now we're going to 
see that sun projecting into your field to activate. This is a prayer and it's a wonderful way to tune in before you pray or before you do anything. So repeating after me. I am before me. I am behind me. I am at my left. I am at my right. I am above me. I am below me. I am unto me. Taking a deep breath in, hold for a moment and just ask for the Holy Spirit to govern this archetypal activation within your soul and exhaling. We say, I am, I am, I know I am, I am, I am, I know I am. right and right at a powerful number we're closing out this is the activation of that goddess key in your field and so i will see you again soon please make sure to um subscribe hit the subscribe button love it if you give the video a thumbs up i'm excited to receive comments on this video the video was meant to be 20 minutes so i'm slowly shrinking them down next time i promise this was the first one i'm recording so it was a little bit hard to um gauge how long it would go but i look forward to seeing you for the lilith series many new moon blessings on september 2nd and 3rd and we will be here again for the Pisces full moon coming up on September 17th. And so again, if you're looking for any links to work with me, they are in under the video in the description box. And they can also be found on artofthefeminine.com or on Instagram. And so until we meet again, many, many, many blessings. Namaste.